welcome back to our worldwide viewership. This is James Com, your half-assed reporter of the guy on the bike. Special shout out to our viewers in Brussels, Cape Town, and Ontario. We're gonna drop in here at the hole. And hello. Try to get some pictures of a show. by Vasilish H. Title Muscle of Dogs. Okay, we'll make our sweep over the installation here. Well, I came in last week and uh, kind of scurried through the show. I didn't have time to do any recording, but uh, something about the uh, the work kind of kept it in my mind. It's like uh, having a canker sore and kind of keep rubbing it with your tongue. Okay, this is titled The Kiss 2022. Oil on canvas 40 by 47. So I uh, think I read through the press release last week and it uh, said that Vasilis is Greek. I guess that's an interesting place to be living these days, although it's not in the one or two or three top tiers of uh, the places where contemporary art is being made. But uh, I was kind of interested in this. This is titled Cheating 2022. This is 55 by 47. I think one of the things that uh, kept me pondering this work is the uh, the bad side of it, and by that I mean it's the manifestation of what was called bad painting. I think it was 1976 or 77. Marsha Tucker at the New Museum created a show called Bad Painting. It's titled Licking. And uh, I think that was one of the shows that put the New Museum on the map. And also it introduced a bunch of painters, many of them are still going strong. Judith Lanier is one of my neighbors out in Brooklyn. Uh, Neil Jenny was in the show, Charles Gabardinian. I think there's a lady that we cut a show of about six months ago, Sherry Urquhart, Urquhart, something like that. Did the big hook rug pieces. Anyway, uh, that kind of set a precedence for bad painting and it was in a certain way it was a uh, kind of a harbinger of what became neo-expressionism I 
the uh, trans avant-garde movement, as they were calling it in Europe. This is titled Perfect Couple. And the way I think that this kind of relates to, or the bad painting relates to, Vasilis' work is that, uh, well, it's bad. <laughs> Although the question is, is it bad in a good way or is it just bad in a bad way? Uh, this kind of brings in this whole question of uh, kitsch, bad taste, uh, the avant-garde, where is the avant-garde? Okay, I was going to say, <laughs> at least in this painting, the figure has got five fingers on that hand. We'll see some other pieces where there's four fingers, maybe, on some of these. Uh, they also talk about how Vassilis uses online imagery uh, photos from tabloids, fan magazines, things like that, to uh, get his imagery. Okay, this is, we've only got three fingers on that hand. <laughs> Looks as, look like Antonio Banderas or someone. I think one of the other things that's kind of uh, bad, <laughs> Is the uh, the color shift? And all these have this kind of uh, red orange tinge. It's kind of like the the red shift, the Doppler effect. And in that way, it's kind of like. Uh, bad Polaroids that fade over time, except in this case, instead of fading into grays and browns, they fade into oranges. Okay, so the title of the show is something must love dogs. And one of the other things is the ice cream cone. And, uh, well, we don't want to go too Freudian on this, but I guess the, the ice cream cone represents a lot of various <laughs> psychic drives. Yeah, so one, two, three, four fingers. I was going to say this hand actually looks like it's backwards. <laughs> I guess that doesn't matter. And the dogs are, uh, I guess, a big part of this. It even looks like the clouds are like in the images of dogs, running dogs. Dancing with ice cream. And I was just noticing also that uh, a lot of times, the hole spends a lot of energy, resources, on uh, painting the walls and putting murals and things on the walls. And I noticed this is all kind of painted as well to kind of contrast the colors in the paintings. Dancers with Ice Cream 2022, oil on canvas, this is 60 by 60. Well, so getting back to the whole idea of the aesthetic of bad or the 
history of bad painting. So I said that Marsha Tucker curated a show, and I think it was 1967 at the New Museum. Uh, at that point, that sort of took on a whole character of its own, and uh, as I said, many of these artists are still functioning today. Nicholas Africano, I think, was one from Chicago. Uh, and then in the, I believe in the mid-90s, a version of bad painting popped up in Europe. I think Albert Olam was one of the people that was kind of highlighted with that. And there's been some other manifestations. Uh, although I think the I think the European version had a little more um, conceptual approach, maybe. I don't know. I think a lot of this also kind of has the feel of the 50s or the 60s, maybe. One with the dog on the beach. Oh, well, there's the person that runs this place. <laughs> and Kathy Grayson, <laughs> the friend of the, the person that runs the place. Uh, okay, so again, we've got the kind of melty, body part hands there. I guess I, if one of the things I kind of am attracted to is the um, the paint quality. It's like Vasilis doesn't like spend a lot more time building up his faces or his hands. It's just kind of that's part of the surface. Everything is kind of homogenous. And this is pretty, uh, pretty smooth canvas, so that also sort of flattens things out. Okay, so this is the, uh, the big paintings. Um, getting back to my thesis on the bad, I think originally part of the the question that Marcia Tucker posed was, and this is also coming out of minimalism, and uh, you know that was after pop and abstract expressionism. One of the questions was, why would anybody? supposedly who would, you know, had advanced aesthetic uh, judgments want to go back and do figurative painting, which seemed to have run out of gas in the mid-40s. Why would they go back to doing figurative work? This is titled Versus 2022 Oil on Canvas 90 by 78. I guess probably in 1977 that uh, outsider art was not really a major domain of, at least for the market, a major area where people were paying attention to what was going on. And so there was a kind of uh, maybe a melding of outsider with the bad, except that I think all of the people that were in the original bad painting show were all academically trained and had studied. Some of them were teachers. I know Charles Gabardinian, I think, taught out in California for decades. Okay, so this is interesting. And again, a little hands are kind of like Gumby. Uh, but the bad painters, it was almost, and this relates to the outsiders, 
they weren't doing this so much to uh, show or be in museums or huge private collections. It was more of a personal thing about that. And that's where I would say that in this case, this is a little different category because you don't make a painting that's, how big is this? 78 by 90 inches if you don't want to show it in a nice big gallery and have it hung on the wall of a corporation or someone's uh, huge Southampton home. So and certainly this is almost like um, bad painting on steroids. There's also some kind of ambiguity in the, the imagery. You know, you could uh, make up a very interesting story about the, the narratives for these pieces. Okay, and I'm kind of uh, looking at the way that this paint is laid on here and wondering if he starts out with a uh, kind of a fluorescent orange background that he builds up his images on. I know that uh, Kim Dorlin, a very popular Canadian artist, always paints on fluorescent orange or red backgrounds and sort of builds up his paintings on that, but he uses a lot of green, and so in that way it's kind of a natural extra boost to the, the color thing. Les Damselles des Athens, 2022. This is 90 by 78. Okay, so we know what this is in relationship to a parody of. Famous Picasso painting the Damsels de Avignon. Which I guess were prostitutes at a uh, bordello that Pabs used to hang out at. I'm suddenly also kind of getting a little feeling of uh, El Greco, which I guess this is like 400 years later. The, you know, the Byzantine Greek thing is coming through somehow again. Okay, that's probably the, uh, the worst mouth in here got some competition. We're going to finish up looking at this piece. Actually, it's nice the way that the color of the wall, the kind of grayed out violet, uh, plays on the color of the painting pretty nicely. Portrait of two young women, 60 by 60. I say if we were just looking at this from the uh, abstract side of it, there's some nice abstract shapes, like this dark space of her hair, and that little node down there is nice. Actually, the uh, the pleating at the bottom of her shirt is also kind of nice.
So this has been James Calm reporting on Lucillus H. Must love dogs here at the hole on the Bowery. You can like this, share, link it up to all your social media social media sites. You can subscribe. And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and suggestions below. We just ask you to say thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you.